Hey, it's Chip, Soft Wash Solutions in Clinton, Indiana. I uh, posted some pictures of my trailer build yesterday, and um, I've had quite a few people ask me different questions, so I thought I'd do a couple different videos on the trailer, um, <clears throat> kind of break it up a little bit. But the first one I want to do is on electrical. Electrical is probably one of the biggest things that people underestimate 12-volt systems and wiring inside the trailer. But this is specific for an enclosed trailer. Enclosed trailers, you're going to get... Uh, a lot more opportunity or possibilities of corrosion inside an enclosed trailer than what you would probably think. You're going to have leaks, you're going to have drips, and you're certainly going to have hoses pop. And if your downstream injector is in, is uh, hooked up, you're going to start blowing chemical all over the inside of your trailer. So um, you, know, you shut the doors up, you go to the next job, so just the fumes from the SH. You're going to have a lot more issues than what you think. So when it comes to wiring, we all know that SH is a big conductor of electricity. So my best advice is on your wiring, make sure everything is sealed that can be sealed. Um, and I'll give you some examples and then I'll kind of show you the wiring the way I did mine. And of course when you post a video, you're going to have those who disagree with what you say and that's fine. I don't really care. This is how I did my trailer and these are my opinions. The first one is when you get these kind of connectors, a lot of guys use these to cook, put their pumps and different things. Best advice I can give you on these kind of connectors, get rid of them. Wire nuts, get rid of them. These little connectors here, they're little waterproof connectors. These are okay. They're good for about 12 gauge wire and smaller. Um, they're okay, but don't try to cram a six gauge wire into these. These are waterproof, so you shrink them with a heat gun. And then what I always do on top of that is I buy the heat shrink tubing and I get the good heavy duty kind with the adhesive in it. Don't get the cheap flimsy one, but get the heavy duty one. So then once you shrink these down, then I go on top of it with this just to make sure everything is sealed. Copper and chlorine don't mix. That's why if you have uh, an old house that has copper plumbing in it and you see it's all green and nasty, it doesn't mix with chlorine. Same thing with your wiring. Make sure you're using good, solid copper wire. Or I mean, it's stranded wire, but copper. Don't use the uh, aluminum clad junk. Use good copper. So again, if it's exposed in the trailer, it can be, um, you can get corrosion in your connections and then you lose, you don't get good connections and you start having problems. That's the reason why I say everything needs to be sealed. Uh, they do make a different type crimp fitting um, that doesn't have the heat shrink tube, it's just a crimp, but your wires are exposed. I wouldn't use those either. <clears throat> Again, these are just all my opinion. Um, what I like to use, anything bigger than 12 gauge or that's going to be a feed wire, is I use these copper um, lugs and I solder in my wires. And I've got a different video on how to make these. It's real easy solder in, connect it, put heat shrink on it, and you have a good, good solid wire. Um, so with that little information, uh, I'm going to turn the camera around, and I'm just going to kind of show you the wiring a little bit, what I have inside my trailer. Okay, so inside my trailer, I have three 12 volt batteries that run my trailer. I got two up here in the nose, and I keep voltage regulators on them, so I know I get a quick glance if I have an issue. Uh, the third one is connect to the machine back there. So these are all wired parallel. So when the machine runs, all three of them charge. So during the season, I never have to worry about coming home and putting a battery tender on it and getting them plugged up. I got one on now because it's winter time in Indiana. So I'm just keeping them charged. Um, so I have three batteries. And then this is my main power hub. This is where all the power goes out of. Power for the batteries come into it. And as you can see, everything in here, uh, copper lugs that are all soldered with heat shrink, nut and bolt connectors, everything is tight. There's no wire nuts, there's no splices. Everything is nice and tight. You know, if you get a loose connection, you're gonna generate heat and you can create some problems. So um, out of this one, I've got several sub panels. Uh, I don't have a lid off this one, but this is another little sub panel I got out of this box. It comes up and it feeds this box, which is my hose reels. And again, as you can see, everything is, they're copper lugs, soldered. Everything in here is tight. There's no loose connections. 
all my grounds are nice and tight so I don't have to worry about a ground issue. And there's a cover that will go over the top of it. It's got a gasket on it. So everything is sealed inside there. I don't have to worry about the fumes from SH. I got the breaker up here. Yeah, it is exposed, but you know, these things are cheap enough. It starts to corrode. I'll just take it out and I'll, I'll put another one on there. Um, but that's basically the wiring. And then over here on my 12 volt, this is for, uh, I run the Fat Boy 7 gallon. And this is on my wiring. I got a remote on it. So if I'm up on a roof and pop a hose or something happens, I can shut the pump off and I'm not spraying a hot mix all over everything. So again, everything is enclosed, everything is sealed. And I use these type switches here. This is a heavy duty switch. That's another uh, issue that people have is they don't use heavy enough switches. They'll meld them. So I like these heavy duty switches. I've been using them several years, never had a problem with them. On my pump, it's real easy. I've got a backup pump and I've already got the uh, ends soldered on. So if I have to change a pump, all I got to do is take these covers off. They've got uh, little lugs inside there with, with the rings on them. So all I do is got to unbolt it, put the new pump on, bolt them up, put the cover on, and I'm back in, back in service. So everything is sealed and everything is covered. This is the back of the trailer. This is the third battery that I have that's running on the machine. Again, I've got a digital on regulator on there or a voltage readout so that I can tell pretty quick if I'm having an issue. Um, this is hooked to the eight gallon machine. You know, the two batteries up front are wired off this one so they all three charge at the same time. This is the wiring. Um, this is really the only exposed wiring in the trailer. And I use these little lugs here, but this switch here, I have a hot water burner that I can put in here if I need. I don't use it very often, so I don't carry it. But if I need, I can put it in the trailer, and then I can just quickly hook it up here, have power to it. This is another panel back here. Uh, this switch here goes to this pump over here, which is for my window cleaning. And then I got another switch box here. This goes for when I put my door down. I've got lights. Just try to keep people from running over me. And then this one, I do have a tank light in here. I put it in about three years ago in this tank. I've never used it. But I guess if you need light at night, it might be kind of good. Uh, but really, like I said, that's the only exposed wiring right there. And that's just for hooking up hot water if I need it. And that pretty much... Kind of goes over all the electrical inside the trailer.